Sooner or later, Dr. King said, all the people in the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace and thereby transform this pending cosmic elegy into a creative psalm of brotherhood. If this is to be achieved, man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. That's what he said when he accepted his Nobel Prize in Oslo, December 10th, 1964. Are we there yet? Are we even close? Violence begets violence, which begets violence, which breeds violence, which births nothing but more violence. And the only winner in a brutal blender such as this is violence itself. The master's tools will never dismantle the master's house, Audre Lorde once wrote. Dr. King's antidote, the foundation of such a method, the only way is love. Ahava, ahava. In the flush of love's light, we dare be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love, Dr. Maya Angelou wrote, it is only love which sets us free. The Torah, the five books of Moses, has something to say about love or about who to love. Between Egypt and Israel, betwixt slavery and freedom, persecution and prosperity, running for their lives, wandering in the desert, the ancient Israelites received three distinct commandments, obligations from the master of the world, from Akadosh Baruch Hu, to love. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha b'chol levavcha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol meodecha. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mightiness. Loti kom veloti turet b'nei amecha ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. Ani Adonai, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against your people. You shall love your neighbor, your fellow, your brother, your sister, as you love yourself. Ke'ezrach mikem yehiye lachem hager hagaritchem, v'ahavta lo kamocha, ki gerim hayitem be'eretz mitzrayim, the stranger among you. You shall love him or her as you love yourself, for you too were strangers in the land of Egypt. The Torah is clear. Love God, the maker, the source, the eternal. Love your neighbor, the ones around us, the faces we recognize and know, the ones we recognize but don't yet know, the ones we haven't allowed ourselves to see at all. Love the stranger, the sojourner, the refugee, the immigrant, the asylum seeker, the wanderer, embedded in all of them. Love ourselves, the heart within our hearts, the youest part of you. Except the love yourself bit, it isn't actually commanded like the others anywhere. Love them like you love yourself. It's an assumption, and it's much harder than it sounds. Such that other relationships are contingent upon it. To love another is to first understand that we ought love ourselves. The prophetic author, Dr. Bell Hooks, said it best. When we can see ourselves as we truly are and accept ourselves, we build the necessary foundation for self-love. Whether we learn how to love ourselves and others will depend, will depend on the presence of a loving environment. Self-love cannot flourish in isolation. The light of love is always in us, she wrote, no matter how cold the flame. It is always present, waiting for the spark to ignite, waiting for the heart to awaken. The Torah commands us to love, upward, outward, inward. About a year before he was murdered, Dr. King explicated this. April 9, 1967, at New Covenant Baptist Church in Chicago, the three dimensions of a complete life, length, breadth, 
height. The length of our days is to be measured by the effort with which we invest in our inner growth, our personal welfare, our unique power, love thyself, breath. By breath, Dr. King asks each of us to consider our lives in relation to the welfare of others, or to what extent do we move laterally to engage with the world around us, love thy neighbor, love the stranger, and height the dimension that Dr. King describes in upward striving to be in relationship with God, or do we love God enough? This, friends, is the formula. Dr. Eric Fromm defines love by four characteristics, care, responsibility, respect, and knowledge. Now, some of you might be wondering, what about the elephant in the room, or is there an elephant in the room? We have a rabbi speaking to us in church. 100 days into a war in the Middle East. Will he talk about Hamas's brutality on October 7th? Will he talk about the tens of thousands of indiscriminate rockets fired at Israel? Will he talk about Israel's bombs in Gaza? And I'm here to tell you that that's not the elephant in the room. I'm a Jew. My homeland is Israel, but I'm a citizen of Washington, D.C., and I vote here. <laughs> the elephant in the room would be, is, would be if I walked off this platform without leaving Mayor Bowser or city council with a message about violence in this city. To our leaders, there is violence here. It's, maybe it's growing, but it's not because we don't have enough jail cells. There is violence in this city, but it's not because we have some kind of feckless court system. There is violence in this city because we have given up on love as the antidote. <laughs> Do you want a safe car, a safe commute, a safe walk? Love more. It can be no other way. What if, what if we, each of us, moved through the world in such a way, love's potent energy emanating in every direction, swirling around us, mine and yours colliding, interacting, growing, and spreading to the next of us? Can we cultivate, support, elevate, and permeate this city with more souls of love like this? How else can we birth and rebirth the loving environment, a collective redemption, the vision of King and Lord and Hooks and Angelo and Fromm and Peoples and Addis Israel? The answer will always be cultivating communities of love, believing in its power and knowing that the only way out of the cycle of violence, the only way, is to build a community of love, authentic love. The great sage, and I'll finish with this, the great sage, Coretta Scott King, she once said, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. A heart of grace, which by the way is the heart of God, and a soul generated by love. Kenya Hiratzon, may it be so.